สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. Today we have a special guest, and his name is David. Say hi, David. Hi, David. Wow, you're just as silly as Grace. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday in ordinary time. <sighs> What's wrong, David? Is everything okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Hmm. I was supposed to be at my friend's birthday party today, but I decided to come here instead. Oh, thank you for the sacrifice. I did. Um, what is a sacrifice? Sacrifice is the theme for this week. You'll find out more soon. But first, shall we start with a prayer? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son Jesus, who gave His life for us on the cross, so that we are safe and united with you. Sometimes we are so busy we forget how big your love is. We want to show you that we love you too. Help us to willingly give up the small things so that we can gain the big things. Like kindness and true joy, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In my wrestling, and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my trouble. Silence, you won't let go. In the questions, you're true. 
Thank you for sharing these wonderful artworks. If you would like to have your work shown next Sunday, simply share it with us on our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Oh, hey! We were just singing this song. Want to sing along with us? You just need to echo whatever I sing. It's easy. Let's go! This is amazing grace. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. That I would be Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Well done, kids! Yay! And you too, David. <gasps> so good. Hey, Joy. I'm collecting money for charity as part of my school's community involvement project. Want to chip in? Oh, I definitely would, but as of now, I don't have any more money. What about the allowance that mom gives you? I spent all of it already. On soft drinks? No, on food. But yes, actually I did spend on soft drinks too. But this cost only one dollar. What difference can I make with one dollar? Oh, you'll be surprised. I have until the end of the month to collect donations. Why don't you try saving up your money instead of spending on unhealthy drinks? And we'll see how much you have at the end of the month. One day, Jesus was sitting in the temple teaching his disciples about God. He sat opposite an offering box where worshippers could come and offer their money. He watched as one after another, rich men dressed in elaborate robes dropped piles of coin into the box. Then, a poor widow came along with only two small copper coins, much less than the others who came before her. It was all she had, and she dropped them into the offering box. Jesus admired this woman, telling his disciples she had given up more than all the others. It is easy to give a lot when you have a lot, but it's much harder when you have little and yet give all you have. Wait, 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 wait. do you hand in the money already? No, but I'm about to. Do you have any to offer? Here you go. Yes, I do. A lot of money. Wow! That right. is a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I did what you said. I stopped buying soft drinks during recess and drank water instead. Every day when I came home, I dropped that dollar into this envelope. And look how much you save. Thanks, Joy. This is going to mean so much to those who need it. Yeah, I don't need the extra soft drink at recess. But someone out there might need an extra dollar just to have enough to eat. And hopefully this money will get to them. I'm proud of you, Joy. You sacrificed something that made you happy for those who need it more than you. I know what sacrifice means now. It is to give up something if that something is taking us away from God. But do you know that there are different types of sacrifice? For example, if you can't help suffering from an illness, you can offer that up as a sacrifice for those who are sick. Oh, and there's also the sacrifice at Mass. Every time the Eucharist is celebrated, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross is made present. Wow! Wait, wait. What is the purpose of sacrifice? Good question. We willingly sacrifice things like our time and energy to show our devotion to God, to show just how much we love Him. It means that when we love someone so much, we are willing to do anything for that person. 
Love requires sacrifice. And our sacrifices can not only be for God, but for other people as well. It could be something as simple as giving up the time you spend playing games to help the chores around the house. Oh, or like how Joyce sacrificed her refreshing sweet drinks to give more money to charity. Exactly, because as God said in the Bible, whatever you do for the least of your brothers and sisters, you do for me. So think about those sweet drinks or video games or whatever it is in your life that you could give up to help someone in need. So, what can I give up that will make you happy? Hmm. Maybe your silly jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh wait, you're, you're serious? Yeah. Um, let's discuss this during lunch. Sure. In Japan, there is a hill called Holy Mountain overlooking the city of Nagasaki. Centuries ago, 26 martyrs of Japan were persecuted and crucified there by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the ruler of Japan, 
for their love for Jesus and his church. The 26 Christians consisted of religious and laity of all ages. St. Paul Miki came to be the most well-known of the 26 Japanese martyrs. He was a Jesuit known for being a great preacher whose faith and love for God was so strong that even as he hung from the cross, he preached passionately to the crowd surrounding him. He said, The only reason for my being killed is that I have taught the doctrine of Christ. I thank God it is for this reason I die. I want to say to you all once again, ask Christ to help you to become happy. I obey Christ. After Christ's example, I forgive my persecutors. I do not hate them. I ask God to have pity on all. Today, the Catholic Church has religious freedom in Japan. And if you go to Holy Mountain, you will see a stone cross and 26 trees, one for each of the 26 martyrs. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Hey, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram or any social media with the hashtag Catholic Mass at Home. Let's now listen to what Auntie Estella has prepared for us this week in One Mass Minute. When God made the universe, the first thing He created was light. Thousands of years later, Jesus told his friends, I am the light of the world. We need light to see and understand our world. In the same way, Jesus makes it possible for us to see and understand God. This is why the church uses light to signal that Jesus is here. At Mass, the candles on the altar remind us that Jesus will be with us in the form of bread and wine. The altar boys carry torches when Father reads the Gospel because we are hearing what Jesus said and did. And every year at the Easter Vigil, the Paschal candle is lit to show that Jesus has died and risen again. His light has conquered the darkness forever. Is light only used at Mass? No, the red sanctuary lamp burns next to the tabernacle to remind us that Jesus is always present. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learn about the meaning of sacrifice. There's nothing like giving God our hearts and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time, 13 February 2022. We offer up this Mass for all the people of God, that we may live lives of gratitude for the many blessings the Lord showers on us each day. Join us in singing the processional hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Parents and children, today we hear Jesus teaching us the Beatitudes from the Lucan version from St. Luke's Gospel. But I'd like to draw your attention to the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. And in that reading, Jeremiah tells us of two kinds of persons, those who trust in God and those who trust in men. Now, children and parents, as we gather ourselves today to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind the numerous times in our lives when we failed to trust in God, but rather we trusted in created things made by human beings. For these occasions, let us now be sorry and ask the Lord for a deeper sense of faith and of love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teaches that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace 
as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. A blessing on the man who puts his trust in the Lord. The Lord says this. A curse on the man who puts his trust in man, who relies on things of flesh, whose heart turns from the Lord. He is like a dry scrub in the wastelands. If good comes, he has no eyes for it. He settles in the parched places of the wilderness, a salt land, uninhabited. A blessing on the man who puts his trust in the Lord, with the Lord for his hope. He is like a tree by the waterside that thrusts its roots to the stream. When the heat comes, it feels no alarm. Its foliage stays green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never ceases to bear fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. No lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day. Planted beside the flowing waters that use its fruit in due season, and whose leaf shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Happy the man. From the letter from Saint Paul to the Corinthians, if Christ has not been raised, you are still in your sins. If Christ raised from the dead is what has been preached, how can some of you be saying that there is no resurrection of the dead? For if the dead are not raised, Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, you are still in your sins. And what is more serious, all who have died in Christ have perished. If our hope in Christ has been for this life only, we are the most unfortunate of all people. But Christ has in fact been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stopped at a piece of level ground, where there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. Then fixing his eyes on his disciples, he said, How happy are you who are poor! Yours is the kingdom of God. Happy you who are hungry now, you shall be satisfied. Happy you who weep now, you shall laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, drive you out, abuse you, denounce your name as criminal on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice when that day comes and dance for joy, for then your reward will be great in heaven. This was the way their ancestors treated the prophets. But alas for you who are rich, you are having your consolation now. Alas for you who have your fill now, you shall go hungry. Alas for you who laugh now, you shall mourn and weep. Alas for you when the world speaks well of you. This was the way their ancestors treated the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear children and parents at home and grandparents, what do we do when we know we've got a very important agenda, a very important event going to happen later or tomorrow or in the coming, in the coming days? Many of us people who have faith will be praying hard, isn't it? We'll be asking God to assist us, to, especially let's say if children, if you do an examination, you'll be praying and asking God to help you to have clarity of mind, to help you to remember what you've studied, to help us to do well in the exams. And we will pray unceasingly, especially if it's something so important, like our PSLE, like our O-levels, or anything else that maybe we have to go through. Today in our Gospel, we have Jesus doing the very same thing. We are told that he came down with the twelve and stopped at a piece of level ground. What did Jesus come down, or where did Jesus come down from? In Luke's Gospel, the children, you like to know that every time when Jesus has to make a very important decision, he precedes that decision by a prayer. And whenever we hear Luke telling us that Jesus went up the mountain, it is always that Jesus went off to a quiet place a lonely place to be by himself so that he could connect, he could pray with the Father. Now this is very important because what we heard today in our Gospel is a very important teaching of Jesus. And we are told by, in Luke's Gospel that Jesus came down after that prayer and he had already chosen the twelve. If you read the passage that came before today's Gospel passage, Jesus would be choosing his disciples after saying that prayer. And so now he comes down with the twelve and something very important, he says here, he stood or he stopped at a piece of level ground. Why is this an important detail? Luke is telling us that when Jesus teaches, especially to the Lucan crowd, Jesus wanted to be with them. Jesus wanted to identify with them on that same level. Now this is a lesson important for us because sometimes those of us who maybe who are church going, some of us maybe who have studied very hard, we tend to have that superiority complex. Worse still, if we think we know more than our friend, our classmates, our neighbors, sometimes we even talk down to them. But in Jesus' case, what he did was he stood on a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering. And what Luke tells us that everybody wanted to hear. He covered the whole crowd of the Israel. Uh, of the people of Israel by saying that there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem, even from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. What were these last two places, Tyre and Sidon? These were pagan places where the Jews did not stay. So what Luke was telling us is that because of Jesus' teaching, 
so many people from all parts of the region wanted to come and hear him and to be cured of their diseases. Then listen to this, Jesus fixing his eyes on his disciples. That's a message we want to hear. With that sincerity, with that sin seriousness that Jesus had, he wanted to teach and reach out to us who are already with him on the level ground. And Jesus is saying, what are our priorities in life? Do we focus on God's kingdom or do we focus only on ourselves? Jesus gives encouragement to the poor. He says, even though you may be poor, and by this, your children, it's not about being materially poor. It could be people who have been excluded in society. Friends of ours maybe who are in school who, are, who don't have many other friends. People with special needs. People of a different colour, of a different race, a different nationality. These are the poor that Jesus was referring to. He said, you may be poor, we may be poor, but God's kingdom will be yours if you have the faith, if you believe, if you trust. Jesus goes on to say, happy you who are hungry now, you shall be satisfied. What does this mean? We who are hungering, and it not, it, it not only be food or drinks, it could be hungering for justice, hungering for peace, hungering for healing. Jesus is saying there will come a time when we will be contented and satisfied. He goes on to say, happy of those of us who are in sorrow, weeping now, we shall have joy. Now, what really is the message here, children? St. Luke the Evangelist is saying that through Jesus and with the presence of Jesus, there will be a reversal of things that are happening in the world. You may recall just about three weeks ago, on the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, we were told what Jesus preached when he was in the synagogue in chapter 4 of Luke's Gospel. And in that chapter, Jesus opened up the scroll and he read out from the prophet Isaiah, saying that the Spirit of the Lord has now descended upon me. Why is this important? Jesus is saying, and re-echoing what the Jewish people believed, that when the Messiah comes, there will be a reversal of life, lifestyle. People who are poor will have the kingdom of God. People who are hungry will be satisfied. People who weep will laugh. People who are hated, despised, abused, denounced, there will be a time when they will rejoice. That's what the coming of the Messiah does. Because the Spirit of the Lord has been anointed upon Jesus, He's come to bring a revelation, a reversal of what is happening in the world. And what Jesus is saying is that when He is with us in company, beautiful things can happen. Children and parents, do we have that trust to acknowledge that when Jesus is in our midst, beautiful things can happen? That's why we celebrate seasons like Christmas. That's why we celebrate times when we invite one another to welcome Christ into our midst. Because when we pray together like what you are doing now at home with your family, your loved ones, your friends, Jesus is saying, where two or three are gathered in my name, I want to be with you. That's the beauty of our faith. And that's the beauty of our Beatitude today when we hear that Jesus is on that level ground. He is with us constantly by our side. And one more thing, children, I want to tell you is this. Today's Beatitudes from the Lucan version is different a little bit from the Matthew's Gospel, Matthew's version. In Matthew's Gospel, there are eight Beatitudes. In the Lucan version, which we have just read today, there are only four. But then, there is another four of what we call the woes. Today's version says, Alas for you who are rich. Alas for you who have your fill now. Alas for you who laugh now. Alas for you when people speak well of you. What is Jesus' message? That there is going to be a reversal. There is going to be an equality if we bring Christ into our midst. Basically, the question here is this, what are our priorities in life? And parents, the message perhaps is for us. What sort of values do we inculcate into our children? Is it to tell them all the time that you must study hard, work hard so that you can be rich? Is it to say that you must always be contented and never think of those who are beside us who are hungering? 
Does it always mean that we have to be happy all the time? Jesus is saying, yes, these will happen, but these are worldly pursuits, temporal pursuits. Being in touch with the Lord, following His teaching, actually entails much more than that. Children, there's a big word today that we hear, which is paradox, P-A-R-A-D-O-X. The paradox means a statement that may seem contradictory, but there is truth. Today's teaching is a paradox. It seems like a conflict of interest. It seems contrary to what we have been told from young, to do well, to be happy, to be contented, to be praised, to be affirmed. But Jesus is saying it is much, much more than just looking out for material goods or material needs. It's ultimately about trusting in the Lord, having faith in Him and allowing the Lord to make use of us so that His glory will be manifested through our life. No matter how good, no matter how bad, no matter how difficult or how heavy our crosses are, Jesus is saying, do we trust Him? And that's what the prophet Jeremiah is saying in the first reading. The man who trusts in a person, in a created thing, will be cursed. Why? Because he relies on things of the flesh. His heart turns away from the Lord. Whereas, if a man who trusts or places his trust, his hope in the Lord, he is going to be blessed. Why? Because his hope comes from the Lord. And the analogy used here, beautifully children, is this. This man who trusts in the Lord is like a tree by the waterside that thrusts its roots to the stream, such that when it's heat, when it's hot, that plant, that tree will feel no alarm. In fact, its leaves, its branches still remain green. What does this mean? To be like a tree by the waterside means that our roots will grow deep such that it can reach its source of life, the source of strength. And a person who trusts in the Lord indeed is one who is connected, who has his roots connected to the Lord. That's what Jesus is saying. It's much more important than getting, get, gaining material wealth, being contented, being happy, being praised and affirmed. Jesus is saying what makes a man happy and blessed is that he or she is connected with the Lord. And so children and parents, as we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time, we ask ourselves, how connected are we with the Lord? How in touch are we? Are our roots with Him? Are our roots only based on material and man-made things? Let us pray for the grace to be able to recognize where we are at today and what really are we looking for in life. Amen. Children and parents back home, let us now stand to profess our faith. God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O most faithful God, as we gather together in faith as a community to celebrate your unfailing love and mercy, with trust and confidence, 
we now bring to you our needs and petitions. The response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our religious leaders, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Goh, all priests and clergy, and those who lead us and guide us in our faith, that they be true witnesses of Christ's compassion for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for active participation and the grace of openness towards one another, so that the synodal process, as initiated by Pope Francis, may renew our commitment to walk with one another towards the vision of God for his church in Singapore. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of every nation, that their government be illuminated with the light of God's law and they govern with justice and truth, working for the common good of the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, that we will grow in love and devotion for Jesus and that the church's preaching of the gospel may open the eyes of many to the beauty and truth of what she teaches. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those suffering the injustice of racism, that all humanity may unite as one in working for harmony, justice, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On World Day of the Sick this week, we pray for those who are sick, especially the chronically ill and those who are affected by COVID, that they be granted healing and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have went before us, we pray that they may share in the peace of eternal life promised to us all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment for our personal intentions and the intentions of our family and friends who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, in you we take refuge. We ask you to hear the prayers we bring to you. Incline your ear to us and save us. Be our fortress and stronghold in our times of need. Help us to acknowledge your greatness and to serve you with grateful hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it, to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially 
with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We share with each other that peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The children and families back home, we now enter into a time of spiritual communion where we invite Jesus into our hearts and we pray and ask the Lord to dwell in us so that we can live out His mission to love. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.